Let us learn how you can use the best text to speech open source model locally within your computer. This is an 82 million parameter model. So even if you have got a really less RAM like 8 GB RAM or MacBook Air, something like that, you should be able to run this without a lot of issues. I'm running this on my M3 Max. If you're on Windows, you might have to make slight tweaks um, from what I'm doing. So if you're on Windows or Linux, there are small places where you might have to make changes. I'll let you know that. But if you're on Mac, you can follow exactly what I'm doing. And I'll also share the code in the YouTube description for you to just copy and then use it. Very first thing that you have to do is you have to open your terminal. And once you open your terminal, you have to make sure you already have Git LFS installed. That is important for us to copy the repository. So click this three dot, click clone repository. Make sure you've got Git LFS installed. Now we can skip the large files and we have to just download smaller files. Copy this snippet, go to your Git and then just run it. Go to your terminal and then run it. In my case, the repo already exists. So I have to just delete the repo. So Kokoro, Kokoro. And I'm going to delete it as you can see here. And I'm just running it again. So this is going to clone all the smaller files instead of the bigger files. So I'm going to enter into Kokoro. After I enter into Kokoro, you can see LS. So if you go to this repo here, go to files, you can see instead of the model files, which is like quite big, 327 MB, those are skipped with just a placeholder in there. Most of the files have got cloned here. So you have all these files, kokoro.py, models.py, plbot.py, these are like main files that you need for you to successfully istftnet.py. So these are the main files that you need for you to successfully run the model. So now what you have to do next is at this point, all you have to do is open uh, your uh, Visual Studio code. So I'm going to go code dot. So this is going to open my Visual Studio code. And as you can see here, my Visual Studio code is available. I'm going to go here, click and create a new Python file. And now this is the place where we're going to write the code that will help us just literally run the Kokoro TTS. But before that, we need to handle a couple of dependencies. The very first thing is we need to install eSpeakNG. So this is a speech synthesis engine. So on Mac, I'm going to use Brew. On Linux, you can use sudo apt. Yeah, so there is a Windows binary that is pre-compiled that you can use it if you're on Windows. On Mac, you can simply use Brew. I'm going to copy this run it. In my case, I've already installed it. So it says it's already installed and it is up to date. So that is my first main big dependency. The second big dependency, we have to install a bunch of Python libraries. But one of the main Python library in this particular case we need is PyTorch. So I'm on Mac, I'm going to go ahead with preview nightly, Mac, pip, Python and default. So I can just copy this and run it. But if you are on Windows, you can select Windows. If you're on Linux, you can select Linux. If you have got GPU, then select something else like CUDA, NVIDIA GPU. So depending upon what kind of computer you have got, select the right one. But before you install any Python library, it's always a very good practice for you to create a virtual environment. So once you create a virtual environment, you will see the virtual environment name there. So I'm going to just simply say Python 3 M virtual environment and virtual environment. So let's give this path and uh, we have uh, the virtual environment created. Now we have to just activate the virtual environment. So I'm going to do vnf slash bin slash activate. And you can see the virtual environment is activated here. We didn't have that. And here it has been activated. Once you have the virtual environment activated, just go here, copy the code and come back here and run it. It will install the CPU version of PyTorch, which is the nightly one in this particular case, not the stable one. I was trying with this and it worked perfectly fine. So I'm just going ahead with the same thing. But if you already have a CPU version of PyTorch, even then you have to install this again because we are starting a new virtual environment. If you already have a virtual environment where you have got all these libraries set, then about PyTorch, you don't have to worry about. Once we have successfully installed the PyTorch, then we have got a number of other libraries that we need to install. And these are libraries uh, that are uh, acquired to download the model, create sound file, scipy, numpy, and all the other dependencies. So PyTorch has successfully Install now, clear the terminal, except PyTorch, I'm going to install everything else. So the libraries that we're going to install are Phenomizer, Transformers from Hugging Face, SciPy, Munch, and Sound File. And start installing. And in my case, it is all getting installed. As you can see here, all these libraries getting installed because this is a brand new virtual environment I've created. 
now all these libraries are successfully installed at this point and also like in my case i'm running on python 3.13 so technically this code whatever i'm doing should work on python 3.13 Anything above 3.8, I think it should work fine because that is a PyTorch requirement. Once we have this installed, the next thing that we need to make sure is we need to make sure that uh, we have um, eSpeakNG correctly installed. So I'm going to just do checking. So eSpeakNG is available, text-to-speech 1.52 that is also successfully installed. So all the dependencies that we need to successfully run the Kokoro 82 million parameter model is done. Now that we have set the basic platform ready, the infra ready with all the libraries, it's time for us to write the Python code that will actually create text to speech for us. I'll link the code in the YouTube description so that you can just copy and paste it. There are certain parts of the code that I'm going to explain and then see how we can use this code for whatever we want to do. First of all, when you have this code, you have to create a TTS underscore demo dot pi file inside the current working directory, like the folder where you've got everything. And once you have this, there are certain components like, for example, models.py should be in your current working directory. Kokora.py should be in your current working directory. If it is not there, it would ideally throw you an error. Then we need Torch, um, PyTorch to handle all these things and sound file to deal with the sound part of it. And within models.py file, if you go there, you will also see that, uh, you know, you people use uh, different kind of setups, how to load the main PyTorch file. So within this particular file, if you go to TTS underscore demo, there are certain important parameters like sample rate, the name of the output file, what is the text that you want it to be uh, translated and uh, device. If you have got an NVIDIA GPU available, then you this particular line of code, the line number 16, as you can see here, this will basically set your device as CUDA so that you have got the GPU acceleration to do text to speech faster. But if you do not have CUDA, then it will by default select CPU. Imagine you have got a Mac computer like me, or you have got an ERM processor, or you have got, a, let's say, AMD processor with Rockm. So any other processors, which is not NVIDIA GPU enabled, it will automatically set it as G CPU. Another important caveat here is that Mac has got something called MPS, a metal processing system. But in my testing, when I actually have metal here, so which is like MPS, I did not get any speed upgrade. So I kind of like settled with this uh, CUDA versus CPU code, but let me know if you try it and if you want to use it, you can also set it up as MPS if you have got a Mac computer. Now you are printing what is the detail information there. And this is the most important part. Like you're basically specifying where you want to load the model from. And then second, you're going to specify the voice pack, like which voice you want. In this case, we are selecting AF underscore sky. Now, even though you see here that uh, PyTorch files and even though you see the voice pack file, these are not actual files because when we did the duplicate of the folder, uh, when we did git clone, we made sure that we don't get the large files. So we avoided that. So if you have done everything, including the large files, then you don't have to repeat the next step that I'm going to do. But if you have not done that, if you have done exactly what I did, which is to skip the large files, then you have to go to your terminal again, and then you have to download the model file. So first thing you have to download the main model file. And the second thing you have to download the voices file. So as you can see here, this is about a 350 MB file and that is being downloaded at this point. Once this is downloaded, then we are going to go download the voice pack file. So you can download different voice packs, but because we are using um, AF underscore sky, which is kind of similar to open AI sky, which is the American female sky, which is what we downloaded. So if we go back here, you can see now we have updated the voice file AF underscore sky. And we have also updated the Kokoro dash V zero underscore 19 point PTH, which is a PyTorch file. This is very important because if you do not do this, if you do not have the full file here, then you would start getting some errors and you would be like trying to figure out different things. It will not work. Once this is all done, then all you're doing is taking the text, splitting into smaller chunks, giving it to the TTS, getting the audio back, combining the audio, and finally writing the audio file in output.wav file. At this point, our code looks solid. So for us to check if it actually works, we have to go back to our terminal. And once we go back to our terminal, all we have to do is time Python 3 and the name of the file. In this particular case, the name of the file is TTS underscore demo.py. And once you run this, it is going to try to execute the entire code, which is 
it's going to see if, yeah, oh, great, the code is actually working fine. So you can see that it uh, loaded the voice uh, AF underscore sky, it set the CPU device CPU, and it is saying, hello, welcome to this text to speech test, and it's doing everything. So let me load the file and then see what is happening there. So this is the file here. Let me play this. Hey, please subscribe to One Little Coder. He is amazing. That is really good for uh, such a long text, uh, not like too long, but for this on CPU without even having any GPU acceleration, we have managed to get it done in 21 seconds. So this is, I think, pretty good to be honest. So this is like completely done locally without having to use internet. Like we of course needed internet to do the first setup, but after that we did not require internet at all. So if you were to make some changes, like for example, if you want like a simpler sentence, you can, all you have to do is, Hey, um, please subscribe to one little coder. Actually, I should try this like this one little coder and then see what it does. Um, he is amazing. It's quite a narcissistic comment, but uh, you know, I'm just giving it to a board. So not a problem. Run the same code um, time Python three TTS underscore demo dot pi. And then once you run this, it is going to go back and redo everything and also overwrite the file we have got. It took a lot lesser second, um, which in this case is just like, I think four seconds um, or four plus three would say like user plus. So basically it took a lit, lot lesser time. And if I can run hey, this. Please hey, please subscribe to One Little one Coder. Little coder. He is amazing. Oh, it said One Little Coder very perfectly without any issue. So that is a happy, good thing. And uh, this takes us to the end of the tutorial. I'm gonna give you a very quick recap of whatever we have done. The very first step is for you to go to this repository and then maybe like it, it will mean a lot to the developer. Then you have to clone the repo locally into your computer. You can't easily download it. So what we did is we clone it. And when we clone it, what we did is we skipped the large files. You can still download the models if you want, but we skipped the large files. After we did that, then we installed using brew. If you're on Linux, use sudo. If you're on Windows, um, you have got a pre-built binary available. So we installed eSpeak ng, which is a speech synthesizing engine. Then we set up our local PyTorch version. But before we did that, we enabled our virtual environment, installed PyTorch. Then we installed all the other required libraries like transformers, SciPy, and everything else. Once we did all those things, then we opened the folder, then we uh, wrote this Python code. And after we wrote this Python code, then we made sure that our models are downloaded. So we used a W get to download this model and also the voice pack that we are using, which is the American female sky. So you can, if you want, you can also download different voice packs from this. Um, just basically go point here whatever voice pack that you want. And then you can basically download the voice pack. So after we download the voice pack and everything is ready, then we finally run this code. We go to our terminal, just like run literally within the virtual environment. And then that's it. So it will download, uh, it will down, download the voice pack and everything is done. It will create the speech, the output.wav file and store it in your current working directory, which in my case, this is the current working directory. And then you have got successfully created output.wav file, which is the speech of whatever text that you gave. I hope this was um, quite easy to follow. Let me know what you think about this. I might like probably make a slightly easier version where you can, you know, use a gradient and then run that. But for now, this is, the way you can set up the world's best open source text to, to speech model to date. Like as of today, this is the best text to speech model in the entire world. The model is quite small, 82 million parameters. So even if you have got MacBook Air, a computer with 8 GB of RAM, technically you should be able to run. Let me know what is the processing speed for your computer. See you in another video. Happy prompting.